Okay, okay. Welcome to Pints with Aquinas. Matt Frad here. Glad you're stopping by. I want to look at Pope Francis's recent comments on the U.S. Supreme Court overturning Roe versus Wade. We'll see what he says too about what should be done with uh, politicians who promote abortion. And one of the things he says is there ought to be a pastoral strategy or someone ought to be pastoral. And I agree with that. And I think that's why uh, certain politicians ought to be denied communion and or excommunicated. And so we're going to take a look at what Thomas Aquinas has to say in the Summa Theologiae regarding that as well. Um, one really cool announcement before we get started. I have created a an, an ink on paper newsletter not a boring virtual newsletter that comes to your inbox that you never read, but an actual ink on paper newsletter. It's going to kind of look like this. It's going to be called The Jill. It's going to come out quarterly. This is the official Pints with Aquinas newsletter. Um, we've commissioned a cartoonist to come up with a comic strip. There's a Catholic crossword puzzle. There's articles from theologians. We have an article from Thomas Aquinas, uh, a summary of that article to help you understand it. Um, yeah, a whole article about a particular beer that none of you ever have ever heard of, I'm sure. It's really great. And the only way to get access to this is to start supporting us over on mattfrad.locals.com. And when you do that, I'll even pay the shipping as soon as you become an annual supporter over on mattfrad.locals.com. Click the link in the description below. You'll get a ton of free stuff like daily morning coffee podcasts, monthly spiritual direction from Father Gregory Pine. One just dropped today, actually, just for our supporters. Monthly audio books. We've got um, uh, Teresa of Avila's Interior Castle about to drop. Uh, you know, encyclicals from popes. You get access to all of this as well as a Pints with Aquinas beer stein if you give at a certain level. But if you go over there right now, mattfrad.locals.com, you'll also get, uh, there'll be a link at the top and you just put in your address and you'll be put into the mailing list. And I'm really excited about this. So check that out and a massive thank you. All right, let's take a look at this. Um, pope Francis respects US Supreme Court decision and condemns abortion. This from TMZ, abortion is like hiring a hitman. Yes, that is what Pope Francis said, and he's spot on. Let's take a look at some of this. Pope Francis has responded to the U.S. Supreme Court's decision overturning Roe v. Wade, which returned power to regulate abortion to the individual states, saying he respected the decision but had not studied it enough to comment on it from a juridic point of view. I tell you the truth, he says. I don't understand it from a technical point of view, he explained. Adding, I have to study it because I don't really understand the details of the ruling 50 years ago and now. I can't say whether it did right or wrong from a juridical point of view. All right, fair enough. He's trying to stick within his uh, area of competency. However, he said, I respect the decisions. The Pope went on to consider the question of abortion itself, saying, quote, leaving that, that is the Supreme Court decision, aside. Right. So he's not trying to comment on the legality of it. He's just commenting on abortion at this point. He says, let's go back to the issue of abortion, which is a problem. He said it is important to look at what science has learned in the past few decades. In this, we have to be scientific. See what science tells us today. Science today and any book on embryology, the one our medical students study, tells you that 30 days after conception, there is DNA and the laying out already of all the organs. All right. So fair enough. Like, I feel like he could have said this a little stronger because that can give the impression that abortion might be acceptable for the first 30 days. But that is not what Pope Francis is saying. This is part of the problem of these interviews. They come out colloquially and then get interpreted however people want to interpret them. He asked, is it legitimate? Is it right to eliminate human life to resolve a problem? He insisted it's a human life. That's science. The moral question is whether it's right to take human life to solve a problem. And then he has this great line, indeed, is it right to hire a hitman to solve a problem? And this is essentially what abortion is. I mean, it's, it's a horrible thing. I mean, you can take a particular pill within the first stage of pregnancy to kill your child. So in that sense, you can be the one directly killing your child. But once the pregnancy has developed beyond a particular stage, you now need the help of somebody else to kill your child. And so I think comparing it to hiring a hitman is is exactly right. 
All right, now let's look at this though. He says, the Holy Father also emphasized the importance of a pastoral approach to Catholic politicians who support abortion. Now this word pastoral is complex, not complicated. It's, it's, I guess, one of those mushy words that can be interpreted however you like. So what do you mean by pastoral, Pope Francis? That's the question I'd want to ask, right? He says that uh, it's, it's important we have a pastoral approach to Catholic politicians who support abortion, saying when the church loses its pastoral nature, when a bishop loses his pastoral nature, it causes a political problem. That's all I can say. All right, I'm just going to Google it because I want to know what people mean when, and obviously there's a better way I could do this, I'm sure, but okay, let's take a look at this. This is just the second definition here. Concerning or appropriate to giving of spiritual guidance. Fair enough. So I think when people talk about a pastoral approach, they're talking about having a concern for those under my leadership, right? Being concerned loving those whom I am guiding, like a pastor would guide their sheep. And so I'm here to say that it's precisely this pastoral approach that should lead us to either deny Holy Communion, like was done in the case of Nancy Pelosi, or to even excommunicate somebody. Now, Nancy Pelosi wasn't excommunicated. She was denied Holy Communion. There are other penalties that come along with excommunication. But what I, the, the case I want to make here for the rest of this video is that excommunication can indeed be a pastoral approach. So I want to have a look at what Thomas Aquinas has to say here in the Summa Theologiae. We are reading from the supplement, sup, sup, supplement section, question 21. And he asks, should the church excommunicate anyone? What I want to do is look at his main answer and then look at the first objection and then his response to that. Because I think just by looking at that, it'll show us that excommunication or uh, denying somebody Holy Communion, as was the case with Cordelioni to Nancy Pelosi, like that particular instance was a very pastoral approach. All right. So in his respondio, he says this, the judgment of the church should be conformed to the judgment of God. Fair enough. No argument there. Now, God punishes the sinner in many ways in order to draw him to good. Right. That's the point of, of, of God's judgments upon here on earth. Right. He punishes us for our good. Right. Either by chastising him with stripes or by leaving him to himself so that being deprived of those helps whereby he was kept out of evil, he may acknowledge his weakness and humbly return to God, whom he had abandoned in his pride. In both these respects, the church, by passing sentences of excommunication, imitates the judgment of God. For by severing a man from the communion of the faithful, that he may blush with shame, she imitates the judgment whereby God chastises man with stripes, and by depriving him of prayers and other spiritual things, she imitates the judgment of God in leaving man to himself in order that by humility he may learn to know himself and return to God. So I suppose my concern is sometimes when the word pastoral is used, I'm afraid that people take it to mean niceness. Right? Note that the Bible not once uses the word nice. Right? Kindness is one thing. Right. And that would be charity in truth. But being pastoral will require difficult decisions that people don't like. If I don't love somebody, then I'm I'm unlikely to correct them. Or if I fail to correct somebody under my care, then I'm failing to love them and indeed maybe periling uh, their soul, putting their soul in peril because I'm not warning them of the grave evil that they're persisting in. All right, let's look at the first objection and then the response, because I think this first objection sums up what many people think in the Catholic Church today. All right, so here's the objection that Aquinas wants to respond to. So for those of you unfamiliar with Thomas Aquinas in the Summa Theologiae and other works of his, he'll lay out the 
the best arguments he can against the position he wishes to make, and then he makes that position. So here's the objection. Someone might say this. It would seem that the church ought not to excommunicate anyone because excommunication is a kind of curse and we're forbidden to curse. Therefore, the church should not excommunicate. First note how Aquinas writes syllogistically. He is so clear and I love him so much. (laughs) Right. But that's I mean. Substitute the word curse with mean, and I think that's how many Catholics would argue against excommunication or Cordelioni's decision to bar Nancy Pelosi from Holy Communion, right? It's just mean and you shouldn't be mean. So someone might say, well, it would seem that the church ought not to excommunicate anyone because excommunication is mean and we are forbidden to be mean. Therefore, the church should not excommunicate. Here is Aquinas's response down here. He says, a curse may be pronounced in two ways. First, so that the intention of the one who curses is fixed on the evil which he invokes or pronounces. And cursing in this sense is altogether forbidden, right? So nobody should be casting any uh, curses or should be spells or anything like that upon Nancy Pelosi. This is clearly evil. All right. But there's a second way in which a curse may be pronounced. What is that? Here. Secondly, so that the evil which a man invokes in cursing is intended for the good of the one who is cursed, and thus crushing, sorry, cursing is sometimes lawful and salutary. Thus, listen to this line, because this sums it up. This is why the church excommunicates or, 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 or should continue to, right? This is why the church bars public serious sinners from Holy Communion and should continue to and should do it more, right? Here's why Joe Biden ought to be excommunicated. Here's the line. A physician makes a sick man undergo pain by cutting him, for instance, in order to deliver him from his sickness. Now, I think it is the case that many Catholics took delight in seeing Nancy Pelosi barred from Holy Communion and would would even take a sinful delight in seeing Joe Biden being barred from Holy Communion. Sinful because they want to see him humiliated for its own sake and not for his own good. But the reason we should want Joe Biden excommunicated is because we love him, right? That's, that's, that's why Nancy Pelosi was barred from Holy Communion, right? It's out of love. So the pastoral approach should lead us to ban Nancy Pelosi from Holy Communion, should lead uh, whatever bishop, I'm not even sure, is is it Wilton Gregory? I'm not sure, who is, uh, you know, overseeing uh, Biden to, to, to deny him Holy Communion. It's love that, that, that ought to lead to that, right? All right, so as we wrap up here, I just want to remind everybody I have a brand new ink on paper newsletter that you get for free just by becoming a supporter, an annual supporter of ours over at mattfrad.locals.com. Um, it's actually on newspaper paper, which I'm excited about. The whole point of this is so that you can put your phone in your drawer or set it on fire. You decide. Go sit on your porch or front stoop or somewhere and have a cigar or have a glass of whiskey or have a beer or have a coffee and just ponder something and have a leisurely moment. I think we've forgotten how to do leisure, right? We're we're good at dissociating. We're good at distracting ourselves. We're not good at recreation. We're not good at leisure. And that's the whole point of this quarterly newsletter that we've begun putting out. It has a poem in every edition for you to memorize or read slowly. It has a Catholic crossword puzzle. It has articles from theologians, an article from Thomas Aquinas, an article from me. It has a beautiful, very newspapery comic strip that we've commissioned. Uh, it has a whole article on a particular type of beer I bet you've never heard of. And the only way to get access to this is to go over to mattfrad.locals.com and just become an annual supporter. And when you do, you get a bunch of free things in return, not just this newsletter. But this newsletter is one of those things. And once you become a supporter, you've got to put in your address. So once you've signed up, there is a post pinned to the top of Locals. Go in there, put in your mailing address, no matter where you are, if you're in England or Zimbabwe or Australia, 
will pay the shipping as well as the printing costs. So all you got to do is go over to mattfrad.locals.com. That really helps us out, obviously. So thank you so much. God bless you. And if you haven't yet, click subscribe because I'm so pumped to see that we just crossed a quarter of a million subscribers here on YouTube. So big thanks to all of you who did that. It'd be kind of cool to keep going as long as YouTube will allow us. So please feel free to click subscribe and click that bell button. And that way you'll know whenever we put out a new video. God bless.